Well, hello there, everybody. I hope you've all had a wonderful work week. So Google plus HubSpot, kissing in a tree, a marriage made in heaven. I mean, is it even a thing? Well, this week there was a flurry of news around the possibility that Google might actually acquire HubSpot. There were plenty of people who were dismayed by that prospect and others who thought it might just be the greatest thing ever. But is it even likely or even possible? And what would happen and what would it mean for marketers if it did happen? And what does it mean for marketers that it's even a consideration, a gleam in Alphabet's eye, as it were? Well, let's explore. This is a few minutes of what's new in marketing that might help you lead your business's strategy. Let's roll. Hello, everybody. Robert Rose here with What's New in Marketing. It is what's new in marketing, but most importantly, it's something important in marketing that we think may help you become a better marketer. And if we can help you or your team with content marketing services, including custom training, consultation, ongoing implementation of your content marketing approach, just get on over to contentmarketinginstitute.com, fill out that form, and let us know. We'd love to chat. So, okay, if you haven't heard, this week the B2B marketing world is a buzz over the fact that Alphabet, that's the parent company of good old Google, well, it's apparently up in their castle, their secret lair, petting their white cat and contemplating buying inbound marketing giant HubSpot. Apparently, the price for HubSpot would be somewhere in the neighborhood of $30 to $40 billion, and that would make it by far the largest acquisition that Google has ever made. Now, you might remember that tiny little company named Motorola that in 2011 that Google purchased for a little more than $12 billion and then sold later off to Lenovo for just under $3 billion. So if this goes through, it would very much not be in character with what our classic little evil villain of Google has been doing for the past 20 years. And well, at first glance, you might agree and you go, yeah, that makes no sense. I mean, why would Google want to spend three times as much as it's ever spent to get into the inbound marketing, content marketing, CRM, or for those outside the sort of inside jargon of marketing, the MarTech space? Well, at second glance, it may make a ton of sense, actually. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed here, but we've spent a fair amount of time at CMI talking about privacy, owned media, content marketing, the deprecation of the third-party cookie, and, I mean, wait a minute, didn't I, didn't I talk about that just two weeks ago? Didn't I, didn't I talk about that? More efficiency, loss of data signals, more complexity in terms of reaching individuals in different countries or even states is coming. It is coming. There is a 100% chance it is coming. It's not a maybe it's coming. It's already here. It's coming. Getting good at this is what marketing and content teams need to prioritize in the coming months and quarters. Didn't I talk about that? Yeah, it's really happening. But the bigger picture is that all the oxygen right now is getting sucked out of the ad tech room. I mean, there's plenty of compelling business cases to be made that says Alphabet needs to start to diversify out of the third-party data and classic surveillance-based marketing that has made ad tech a thing for the last 20 years. Yes, put simply, it's about the data. HubSpot would not only give Alphabet the keys to the kingdom of 205,000 business customers and by default all of their customers' data, which almost certainly numbers in the tens of millions, it would get access to all the content, the marketing, the sales information that those customers consumed. Conversely, it would provide an immediate tip of the spear for HubSpot clients to begin to create targeted programs within the Alphabet ecosystem. Now, they can do that to some degree already, of course, and upload their data to Google for more personalized experiences on their own properties, but now they might be able to connect them more tightly into the Google Workspace infrastructure. Then when you add into that the idea of Gemini, Google's AI bot, and it starts to put some sense into how Google might monetize Gemini that goes beyond trying to figure out the ad tech or advertising world of just putting ads on search result pages. So imagine a world, imagine a world, and yeah, I might be stretching here a bit, where if you're a Google spot, is it Google spot? No, Hubspoogle, a Hubspoogle customer. Yeah, let's go with Hubspoogle. Um, so imagine a world where you get into your HubSpoogle subscription and you get access into an interface that allows me with higher priority to have my own owned media, meaning my website, my e-commerce catalog, or my blog, inform Google's Gemini for answering questions to my customers. Recent reports have said that Google may actually be considering putting up a paywall around the new premium features that are part of its artificial intelligence-powered search called SGE. And if it does... 
can you imagine that this is kind of the new gating for small business marketing? In other words, you subscribe to Google's AI, but it's a free subscription. And if you're a HubSpoogle customer, well, that data can be accessed and used for targeting offers throughout the Google ecosystem. It will already be available for, you know, sort of integration into the Google workspace, but that will be very interesting to watch indeed. That acquisition of HubSpot would immediately make Google Workspace for small and medium-sized businesses a much more robust competitor to Microsoft 365 Office with the added capability of inbound marketing as part of the Office suite. But, 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 remember here in the world of rented land that Google is the landlord, and this acquisition is not going to go unnoticed by the government. So the but, and it's a big but, I cannot lie. Oh, yeah, I did. I did just do that. Anyway... The big but here is whether or not this dance can actually happen without running afoul of some regulatory issue. Now, it's been a mixed bag with the analyst, some saying, yeah, this is absolutely no problem to sail through, and others going, "Eh, wait a minute, it might not actually pass regulatory muster. But the question is, would anybody touch this in an election year? And that's a whole other story. So what's our takeaway? Well, I think it's actually a pretty remote chance that Google jumps this hard, but stranger things have certainly happened, and it would be a really exciting disruption in the MarTech space for sure. What's the sure bet, though? The sure bet is that this is yet another, as if we needed more, yet another data point in the trend that says first-party data and your approach to getting good at owned media, attracting and building audiences and using that first-party data yourself is going to be not just a nice to have, it is a must have in today's marketing world. Because it's just a matter of time before Google actually does make a move here. They might just be testing the waters with HubSpot and seeing what the market thinks, but they will ultimately make a move here no matter what they do. If we have our customer data house in order, we will be primed for success no matter what they do. And that, well, That's a few minutes of what's new in marketing that hopefully can help you become a better marketer. And if we can help you think through some of these things, reach out, won't you? We can help. And then remember, in the meantime, it's your story to tell. Hubspoogle it and then tell it well. I'll see you next week.